the world of cold calling, not real sexy, not real glamorous, at least I think for a lot of people. But uh, my guest today is going to change that perception for you. Maybe and maybe not, but she's going to give you the dirty little secrets. Her name is Nicole Attias coming to us from Toronto, Canada. Welcome, Nicole, to Marketing with Tim. How are you? I'm good. I'm so glad to be here with you, Tim. Well, I'm glad you could join us. The cold calling, those are kind of like two little dirty words in the world of business. Like, especially if you're new, you're just entering a sales job. Like the first thing you do, oh, open up the phone book back in the day and then start dialing. You know, is it still, is cold calling still a thing? It is a dirty word. It is. <laughs> It's a dirty word because the only reason why it's a dirty word is because people don't want to do it. They like to hide behind social media, emails, anything to avoid the phones. And why is that? It's the rejection. People can't deal with the rejection, the no, this isn't a good time. No, um, I have to wash my hair. No, I have to ask my husband or my wife. Like, every excuse in the book. So people don't know how to read between the lines as to, is it really valid? Is the no really valid? Or is it, no, I just don't want to hear from you at all today. You're bothering me. Yeah, That's the, the problem. Yeah. Now, do you think that it's, have people become so conditioned when they get a cold call to just immediately defenses go up on the other side? Can you almost sense that? Oh yeah. You're over the phone. Definitely. I mean, we now have to deal with gatekeepers. Like yeah. they're told by upper management to screen calls. They're told, you know, to ask certain questions. And that to me, that's the most frustrating, frustrating thing, right? It's dealing with all of that, getting past all of that. Now there's some great people to talk to on the phone. It's just getting through those ones. That's the problem. And, and of course, there's no, probably no standard blanket answer to this, but is there a way, is there a magic phrase that you can say to somebody to get past a gatekeeper? Is there, a, is there one now. phrase that works every time? <laughs> Speak to me now. Me. Um, there, <laughs> no, there, unfortunately, there is no magic phrase. It's just treating, maybe what I would say is just treat the gatekeeper as though they're the decision maker make them feel important, you know, make yeah. them feel like they're the ones deciding. And then they will probably work with you a little bit better. It's not always guaranteed, but just making them feel like, yeah, you're right. Um, you know, take the time, learn about us. I really want you to know about what we're doing. And you just have that conversation as though you're speaking to the decision maker. Sometimes that helps. Interesting. How long have you been doing cold calling? Uh, you don't want to know. <laughs> a, no, long actually, time, a long time. A long time. Over 15 years for different industries. Such so, as? Such as I've contacted for real estate, commercial real estate, recruitment, cybersecurity, office furniture, space planning, um, you know, different uh, businesses out there. And I would say out of all of those, commercial real estate was the toughest just because the sales cycle is so, so long. Um, but where, you know, the sales cycle is a little quicker, like with recruitment or with office furniture, for example, it was a lot easier to deal with because people are yes, no, yes, no. It's not oh, get back to me in three months and we'll see where we're at. Get back to me in six months. Uh, you know, a year goes by and then that person's not even in their position anymore and you're yeah. left kind of hanging. And that just drove me crazy, right? Some people, it works for them, right? They build a relationship that way and it works for them. But for me, I knew that I needed that quicker yes, no response. And that's it where cold calling works really well is the quick yes, no yeah. What's the, for, for those people working in a, you know, a, a phone farm or what, I'm not sure what the industry term is for these things, the cube boiler farm. room, <laughs> boiler room. There you go. For That's those, an old one. Yeah, yeah. For those, for those maybe working in that type of environment, what's a good success rate for them on a daily basis? It goes by industry. It doesn't go by, I, I can't say that like for, for example, recruitment pre COVID, I could get one to two meetings per every 10 calls. 
Wow. Right. But those numbers have changed, you know, since, sure. you know, people are doing the whole Zoom thing, right? And things are slowly going back. That would be an example. Now, I could say that, you know, maybe one in 10 in cybersecurity, commercial real estate, maybe one in 30 to get something decent. Oof. Maybe less, right? Somebody yeah. else, somebody might argue with me and say, no, that's not true. But when I say one in 30, I'm saying it like in terms of, qualified appointments see the purpose of picking up the phone is to set the meeting it's not to you know to sell them over the phone oh it's not no because that's that's what i thought it was i thought that's what it's no that's like telemarketing are... that's telemarketing that's like <laughs> don't bother me to you know like don't don't sell me like vacuum cleaners right now i'm eating dinner with my family right right, right? right. i'm not talking about that but what about your car warranty I mean, can, can we talk to you about your car warranty? Those that's the big hot one going around in the U.S. Is, is it is, really? Oh yeah. Oh my gosh. Oh. What ha- tell me about what see. happens. What happens? Oh, it's just it's you, you'll get you'll get the the number will pop up on your phone and it, and then it will be somebody in India saying, "Do you have a car warranty or extended <laughs> car warranty or something?" Right. And this just as as a rash of this going on, and it's yeah. been it's been going on for a couple of years now, actually. Yeah, we get all kinds of calls from different parts of the world. And, you know, I get those, I get text messages from people I don't know. Like, this is pure spam. I'm not talking about spamming people. I'm talking right. about like targeting the right decision makers, the right firms, you know, not harassing everybody, you know, in your neighborhood. Yeah. And you bring up a really interesting point. In this day and age of social media, digital texting, all of that stuff, cold calling still has a place. It does. It does. If it's done a certain way, it does in conjunction with all the other, you know, marketing you could do. Sure. Right? It's and just not, a, sorry, go ahead. Oh, no, I was just going to say, it really is kind of a first step into a funnel. You know, I hate that word, but it really it is. is the first step down a path towards hopefully a sale. Yeah. And you know what? You can start off with email. You can start off with social media. There, there are no hard rules, right? Some people say, oh, call first thing in the morning, or I don't believe in that. I don't believe in any of that. I believe in the numbers game. That's what I believe in. And I think you could make these calls at any time. You can follow up with the first email. You can follow up, you know, after social media, you know, on LinkedIn or wherever, you choose. Sure. And then, but as long as there's some kind of voice attached, so they're not, not everything is so robotic. And I think people have forgotten that. Oh, no doubt. No right? doubt. A- a- absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, let's talk about what uh, the audience that listens to this, uh, most of them are as entrepreneurs. And I will tell you as an entrepreneur slash small business owner, um, I, I don't like, I don't mind picking up the phone. But doing cold calling, I mean, that's like showing the cross to a to Dracula. It's just <laughs> not. <laughs> no, no. First off, we think it's time consuming. think it's practically pointless. Uh, and even if we approach it as as you do as a numbers game and you're saying 10 or 20 percent, maybe on a good day of just setting an appointment. Oh, Numbers game, but targeted. Don't get me wrong. It's Ah. not like you're ripping the white pages or the yellow pages and calling. I don't believe in that. You know who you're calling. You're targeting the right people. You're not speaking to just random people. All of this, it's like target marketing, right? Like you don't just randomly call anyone because of course that's like, that's so discouraging. You're wasting all your energy. You're getting burnt out and you're getting nowhere, right? I'm not talking about that. You yeah. know who you're going after. I'm going after, it sounds so bad, but you know who you would like <laughs> to speak to. Sure. Right? And that's how you go. That's before, the way to do it. Before you even pick up the phone, what's the first thing? If somebody wants to get it and they say, you know what? Nicole is right. I'm going to give this cold calling thing a try. What's the first piece of advice you would give? Just pick up the phone. That's my advice. I say, you know, like I've got a couple of young people working with me making these calls. And what I did to train them was, here's your list. This is what you're going to say. Make the calls. You know, I didn't spend days and hours. I said, make the calls. 
because that is the biggest barrier. Well, what if uh, such and such happens? Well, what if it doesn't matter? Make the call, make the mistakes. It doesn't matter. Get used to making the call, get used to people telling you no, get used to all that. And then if you're not sure about something, come back to me and ask me, well, they said this, what do I do now? So the biggest barrier is actually picking up the phone and doing it. That's the biggest barrier. There is no magic phrase. There's no magic, you know, <laughs> I, I'm not going to lie. There just really isn't, you know, sure, you don't want to sure. sound like a, like a, like a sleazy car sales guy, right? You or don't want to sound yeah, like that. Yeah. So. You don't want to sound like some fast talking salesperson just trying to weasel their way in for a cheap sale. Right. How do you, how do you deal with handling and hearing no so much? on a daily basis or whatever? Well, I just take breaks. I take breaks and I'm thinking to myself, really, they said that. And I get like, I get, you know, angry. We all do. We don't want to hear no over and over again. But then I remind sure. myself it takes X amount of no's to get to that. Yes. As I said, one in 10, one in 20, whatever that number is in your line of work or in your industry, you know what that number is. So just keep going. And then take breaks and then just stop doing it for a while. Yeah. Because if you're irritated, the people on the other line are going to feel that. And it just it spirals into problems. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so what you're saying is if you're going to get into the cold call game and, and it sounds like you suggest or you think that entrepreneurs should yeah. uh, get into the cold call game, uh, that view each one kind of as an at bat in baseball. Like they're not all going to be home runs. You're going to strike out. You're going to strike out, you know, more than, than you hit home runs. Um, so it's just doing, it really is just doing it. Uh, it's just, just doing it. And, yeah. you know, with entrepreneurs, I found it's very different from corporate with corporate. You're going to get more of that, you know, chasing, you feel like you're chasing with entrepreneurs. You're not, I find it's different. I find they're more open, they're more relaxed, but the problem is, is that they, they don't come, they don't always keep their commitments. This is a problem I've noticed. They agree with you. They'll meet with you. And then they just disappear. I why noticed. Do you think, why do you think that is? I have no idea, but it's just something I've noticed. It's a little less uh, solid, right? So this is just something I've noticed. Not, it's not always true, but I've noticed it. And um, they're more likely to have great conversations, but they're going to go all over the place. There's less of a focus, right? Whereas mm. corporate is more, yes, I want it. No, I don't. This is when I want it. Call me later. They're yeah. very concrete, right? Because we do a lot of B2B stuff. But with entrepreneurs, it's, it's more like jello. fun. Yeah, it's more fun. The conversations are nice but they're not sure. Yeah. Yeah. That, that is an interesting observation. Um, yeah. It, 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 now that you say it, I noticed that too. There's a lot of these, Oh yeah. I want to meet. And it, yeah. Cold call. Sure. Okay. Yeah. That sounds great. And then poof, they're ghosted. Yeah. yeah it, it just makes no sense to me whatsoever. Um, yeah. What, what are the best industries for, in your opinion, for, for using the cold, for doing cold calls? The best industries are any industry with a quick, short, like a short sales cycle, right? As I mentioned, like recruitment's great, office furniture's great, furniture's great. Like you're selling products like quickly. Anything that's a quick, like a shorter sale. Yeah is better because there's no, I have to think about it for a hundred years. It's yes, I want it. No, right. I don't. Right. And I, I, I love that. Right. Do you operate off a script? No bullet points. So if a client comes to me and says, okay, and I don't know anything about their industry, obviously I have to learn a little bit, Sure. but I would say, you know, send me bullet points and I'll speak to you the way I'm speaking to you now. Right. Otherwise, you sound like a machine, right? You sound like a machine. Yeah. It, it, it sucks. <laughs> yeah. People want to sound like a machine. Yeah, and you don't want to talk to a machine either. I mean, at that point, you might as well talk to a chat bot. Um, yeah. Cold calling in, in 
you know, 2022 going forward, do you see this getting stronger, staying the same um, strategies changing? What, what Tell us your I, vision, five-year vision. What do you think? Okay. What I think is it's changed a lot already. We now have do not call lists, no solicitation signs. People don't, people think that it's dying. Okay. And they feel that, like I said, social media is the way to go. Um, well, obviously networking is the best way. And, um, you know, people who know people referral marketing is the best way, but picking up the phone that will never die. Whether you call it cold calling, warm calling or anything, it will never die because that's where you're forming that connection. Even if it's after the fact, right? That's how I see it. People are saying, oh no, I don't need to do that. Right. I have my other ways of marketing. So, it, it, right. So yeah. It, it, yeah. that's my, that's my view. It is changing and it has changed already, but I still believe that making that personal contact makes a huge difference. Yeah. That's no, I, I agree with you. I agree with you. Um, but going forward, um, you said there's no magic phrase. It, is there, as, as we have all these digital tools at our disposal, I mean, like phones everywhere and all this stuff, is there, a, or have you had to change the way you've, you know, if somebody picks up the phone, have you changed, have you changed the way that you greet them? Or is, is that kind of standard stuff? Hi, this is Nicole with fill in the link. I think it's pretty standard. Um, I just go by the tone of voice. I go by people's moods. Right. Cause if you've got like some really nasty person, like I've heard some crazy off putting things such as like, you're he's dead. I contacted, a, <laughs> I'm not kidding. I'm like, for real, this is like a public company. Like this is a public company. We're going to call the company company yes. X. Sure. Okay. And I'm going like, my God, really? That's how this lady answered the phone. Like if she's grieving or if there's an issue, she shouldn't be on the phone, period. He's dead. I'm like, oh my, <laughs> really? Have a nice day, click. I yeah. could not believe. Yeah, exactly. And she hung up on me too. Wow. Yeah. I mean, you just don't know what you're going to get. And I had <laughs> one guy, I had one guy say to me, do you know how many times you called me? Do you know how many times? And uh, I go, I think this is number five. And because I made a joke about it, he's like, he agreed to meet with me. Right. I go, I guess this is not, no, he didn't say, do you know how many times you call me? He said, do you know how many voicemails you left me? And I go, well, I guess this is number five. <laughs> oh, it wasn't, wow. it, was, it wasn't a voicemail. It was live, but like, wow. it's just, how you deal with these people over the phones and just if you treat it as you know something light and fun and and you enjoy it a little bit then people will relax a little bit and it's not as painful it doesn't have to be like sure. hell out there <laughs> well, <laughs> it doesn't you know, have to be hell i you know, swear it doesn't <laughs> okay you know I'm, I'm thinking if anybody's listening to this going of all the careers you could pick you you do cold calling like like is that not <laughs> self torture enough? But but the fact that you can actually turn this like you said it, it's it sounds like you say it's a numbers game. Uh, you you go by percentages. It sounds like you treat it as a game. You know how many how many kills how many sh clean shots can I get today? And so it really is how you approach it that's what it sounds like to me it is it's how you approach it but you'd be amazed you know we work with companies with growing sales teams that's what we do right that's what we do and so these sales people need meetings so either they need help you know over the phone setting those meetings or we help them set those meetings and there are tons like you're in the u.s there are tons of companies that do this stuff Right. But the difference here is that we do sales training too. Right. So I'm not on the phones all day as I used to be. I'm out doing training seminars on this stuff. 
And sure. that's fun for me too, right? So it's a combination of different things. Do you do you do this just uh, primarily in um, Canada, US, or do you are you global, regional? What what's your office like? I mean, right now it's Canada, US, but I'm open to doing this pretty much anywhere, right? Have you ever online, done online? It can be anywhere, but face to face, it'd be nice to go face to face again. Sure, right? of course, of course. Yeah. Have you ever done any training overseas? Uh, you know, the India, Philippines, all that stuff. I have not. You have not. Okay, I just wondered. I, just wondering how different it would be from there to here because you hear all these. Oh, hire a VA. Well, okay, right. yeah, you hire a VA, which is great for some. It's in my in my opinion. They're great for some things. They're not great for everything. Right. And right. I just wonder, what, what's your opinion of VAs and cold calling? Well, I think just in different countries, they do things differently and they expect a response. I mean, I've had people target me <laughs> and they're like expecting an answer tomorrow. And like they, they ask me a question and then they expect me to respond back. And this is through social media. We were talking about social media. Yeah. And they're expecting a response in like right away, the moment that they send the text or the voice text. Oh. And I'm going like, that's not how things are done. No. Are you not interested anymore? Are you, I've had so many people oh. approach me this way and I'm going, okay, well now I'm being cool called and this is how <laughs> they're doing it. I'm going, oh my God. Like, how do you, how do you like it? How do you like it? I don't like it like that. I tell you, I don't like it like that at all. Right. Uh, absolutely. I don't absolutely. know if that answers your question, but. A absolutely. No, that's great. I'm just going <laughs> to, I was thinking as we've been chatting, I'm thinking, have you, I'm sure you have, have you been cold called and you have, uh, but you run, you, you said something earlier and we didn't really do a complete fill in of your bio, but you do training for companies, small companies, medium-sized companies, I would assume. Medium-sized companies with growing sales teams, that would be my ideal uh, market. Um, okay. But I've also done it for other, you know, like um, other departments. So that could be communication training, customer service training, which you're still dealing on the phones. You're just dealing with complaints. Um, it's a different game, right? And then of course, you know, sales reps. And I deal with a lot of egos as well. Like who's she coming in here, training me and teaching me how to do things differently oh, than man. I've always done it, right? Like I've had to deal with, with that kind of stuff. And, but I like those guys because those guys challenge me. And I'm sure. like, okay, okay, really, really? So then I make them <laughs> feel important. And then there's this like back and forth and then they start to like chill out a little bit. They thaw out. Yeah. And Sure. I find it funny. Like personally, I find it funny, right? It doesn't bother me. It used to bother me. Now it's like, okay, here we go. We got this dude coming in here all whatever, right? How long did it take you to let not, not let that bother you? Uh, it took a few years. It took a few years. I'm not going to lie, right? But then now, again, it's like characters. It's like instead of turning on the TV and watching TV, you will have like a live show right there. <laughs> you got your yeah. people like you have a live show right there. Yeah. You know? And so you're probably a really good uh judge of a persona versus an archetype. You know, a persona is, is one person, an archetype is an overarching thing. Uh so you're probably really good because you can, <clears throat> you know, if you get into that room and well, who does this chick see? Who's this Nicole? What whatever yeah. from where? How how are you gonna tell me? And you probably, with your experience, you probably know how to just right, <laughs> like just stick the fangs in and, <laughs> and it's over, you know? Yeah, you learn, and, you learn. But I can read like face to face. I love the face to face, right? I mean, I know we're doing everything. Well, we're doing it less and less on Zoom these days, more face to face. But, right. you know, I love the face to face because I can pick up who's who in there. Right. And I can already sense. And that was part of my problem, too, when I first started doing this stuff with the training, just regardless of the topic, was I understood people too quickly and I knew and I was taking it all in. Right. And it's like, you know, this person's serious. This person's relaxed. This person's analytical. This person's, you know, and when you start reading your audience like that, it's great because then you can relate to them. But it's also not so great because you're taking in their stuff 
right? So it's that yeah. balance of the two. I mean, now we're going off on a tangent here, but now it's the balance of the two, right? When you're presenting is reading the audience and then knowing how to like detach from certain things and carry on, stay on course. It's like a juggling act as a, as a facilitator. I'm sure, you know, as a facilitator, you've heard this before, right? And you experience it. Everyone's different. Then you have those crafted people that present in such a way that they're like that ego guy I told you about. Yeah, yeah. And then when you, you talk to them, they're like a different person when they're when they're not presenting. It's like, who who are you really? The guard you know, comes like, down, the mask comes up. Who are you yeah. really, right? And this is something I've noticed too in this industry. Now we're moving on to the, on the training side, right? This is what I've noticed. Yeah, you're right though. I mean, the guard comes down, the mask comes off and all of a sudden this person's not on stage and they're not air quotes on anymore. Now they're air quotes off. Yeah. Oh yeah, now I can just be me. Well, what were you up there? You know, yeah. so when you talk preaching about- Preaching communication skills. Yeah, it's right. It's unreal. They're preaching communication skills, yet they're not- doing what they set out is the right things to do there. It's a, just bizarre to me in 180 degrees out of phase. Yeah. Um, when you, <laughs> when you, you're talking about reading people and when you, especially in the world of cold calling somebody, you know, you cold call somebody and within it's gotta be milliseconds. You can tell from a person's tone, energy level, etc. It's, it, you get you can't maybe not do a hundred percent accuracy, but really, really high of how they're feeling, what's going on, if they're stressed, if they're busy, if they're tired, whatever. Uh, is is there a way, or have you found a way to uh, be playful with them, or did you just kind of go with the flow? I go with the is flow it? so that I know yeah. how much energy to put there, right? Because you can always call back, right? Most ah. of the success, most of the success with cold calling is calling back is the follow up. So you just need to understand, you know, how many of those you need to do, and how quickly do you need to do them from the first call. That's all it is. That's all it is. There's another thing I didn't even think about it, like following up with cold calls. Everything, oh, it's just call once, and it's like a you get one shot. That's it. And no. <laughs> No. And that's the beautiful thing. Like I like to get voicemail. I like voicemail because with busy executives, they, they're not returning your calls, but I use a system. It's called progressive voice messaging. So you leave a message on Monday and then you follow it up a few days later, referencing Monday's date and time. So then they think, oh, wow, this person's really keeping track. They're taking me seriously. So right oh, there, that's credibility that you're, you're developing. Right. And then, you know, they still don't call you back. You leave it alone. You might touch base again, three months down the road. And then those same people, let's say you actually got through to them and they say, Oh no, I'm not interested. Those same people who gave you a hard time are going to thank you for your persistence. Those same people, right? Not always, but I've had a lot of people say, Oh, thank you for following up. Thank you for being patient with me. Thank you for your persistence. And it doesn't happen on the first call. It happens through time because now it's no longer cold calling. It's warm calling, right? So I don't view it as cold calling anymore. I view it as warm calling now. Yeah. That's where I like to get to. Do you think people that do cold calling as uh, for a living or maybe he's an, it's just uh, part of their job part of right? yeah part of their job That's all it is it's yeah. part of their job do you think the mistake that people make when they're doing cold calling is they're trying to, you know, take somebody to bed on the first date. Like that's not how this works. You know, you've got to, you got to, you got to step them down. You know, you got to, you got to kind of walk them through and go, look, you can trust me. Do you think that's a mistake that a lot of people make? Yeah. Yeah. They're like, Oh, this is hell. I don't want to do it again. Goodbye. Good night. <laughs> bad date, bad date. Sorry. Yeah. Um, I'm not getting anything out of this one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. What do you, okay, uh -huh. well, what, what do you say to those people? What, what, what do you do to break that, that conditioning in those people that think this is how you do it? It's like, if, if it's not an immediate, yes, I'm moving on. I think it just, it's through experience. They just need to learn. They just need to be told and to learn and to try something new yeah. and then just see how it works out. 
That's it. That's it. You know, it's 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 so funny when we first started connecting, um, and we were talking, uh, and you were saying that the whole thing about cold calling, and I'm thinking now there is a phrase that it's in my mind that which could be way off. It could be dead on. I have no idea. It's one of those phrases that, oh yeah, I guess people still do cold calls. You just don't hear of it that much anymore. Right. But apparently, it's still big, still a thing. And it, it's, um, I, I learned a lot of stuff on this today. So this was, this was great stuff, Nicole. Yeah, um, thank you. Where, do, where do people engage your services and find out more about you? They can email me directly, Nicole at prospect to win.com. Uh, I have a YouTube channel and uh, they can learn a lot of tips there. Website being revamped right now, but you know, it's okay. They can go there too. Sure. Pro- prospect to win.com. Is there a number Correct. two or in there any, anything crazy? The number two. Yes. So it is prospect, the number two win.com. Nicole yes. Adias, uh, this, this is great. This is really, really great stuff. And, and uh, I hope you get some more clients, some more coaching clients and all this stuff out of here uh, from this today. And uh, we, we will certainly keep an eye on you. And I want to thank you for being on today. Thank you. It was fun. You're awesome. <laughs> Thank you.